ठीक है सो नेक्स्ट चैप्टर स्टार्ट्स ऑफ विद ग्रुप टू एलिमेंट्स ग्रुप टू एलिमेंट्स विल इन्वॉल्व अ लॉट ऑफ लर्निंग राइट ग्रुप टू एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम ओ लेवल्स यू नो दैट दे आर कॉल्ड अल्कलाइन अर्थ मेटल्स एंड दे आर डेंसर देन ग्रुप टू बिकॉज डेफिनेटली दे हैव अ ग्रेटर मास सो दे विल सिंक इन वाटर एंड दे विल रिएक्ट they contain two electrons in the valence shell they show plus two oxidation state in all of their compounds all of this is o level stuff because of diagonal relationship beryllium and aluminum will have the same electronegativity values what exactly is a diagonal relationship if you see the periodic table it looks somewhat like this beryllium is here boron is here aluminum is here so diagonal relationship is this thing right so diagonals have a certain property which is that the electronegativity values are approximately close enough for many of these elements specifically beryllium and aluminum their values are equal so point number 5 uh, down the group because of increase in atomic size the shielding effect will increase nucleus to electron attraction is weaker which is why ionization energy will decrease shielding effect increases down the group moving forward reactivity of group 2 elements <clears throat> increases down the group all group 2 elements are reducing agents so the reducing power of group 2 elements will increase down the group all of this has to be learned i'm i hope you all know what shielding effect is so basically let's say this is the nucleus right there are energy levels having electrons right there's an electron here there's an electron here right the repulsion between these two electrons is termed as shielding effect moving forward reaction of group 2 elements with oxygen you will again have to learn all of this magnesium when reacted with oxygen would give you mgo it burns with a brilliant white flame it is a white solid calcium with oxygen gives you calcium oxide it burns with a brick red flame and a white solid is formed strontium with oxygen gives you strontium oxide which burns with a crimson flame you will have to learn all of this crimson is somewhat of a purple color and again a white solid is formed as a matter of fact all these compounds are white solids barium will burn off with oxygen oxygen with an apple green flame and a white solid is formed however barium also undergoes the specific reaction where the moles of barium are lesser than the previous case thereby forming barium peroxide now the thing is that barium peroxide is a compound undergoing ionic bonding which is between ba2 plus and o2 minus and there is also covalent bonding between oxygen molecules oxygen and oxygen will have a covalent bond amongst themselves right barium because of its extremely low uh, less charge density will show this anomalous behavior as compared to all of the group 2 elements barium peroxide reacting with h2so4 is giving a salt thereby telling us that this one has basic properties because it is reacting with an acid to form a salt right h2o2 will this is a data booklet reaction by the way data booklets are provided to you and if it reacts with iodide ions it will oxidize iodide ions into iodine thereby telling us that hydrogen peroxide is an oxidizer 
डाइजिंग एजेंट इट सेल्फ गेट्स रिड्यूस्ड बट विल ऑक्सीडाइज द कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग स्पीशी ऑक्साइड्स ऑफ ग्रुप टू एलिमेंट्स मैग्नीशियम ऑक्साइड कैल्शियम ऑक्साइड स्ट्रॉन्शियम ऑक्साइड बेरियम ऑक्साइड बेरियम ऑक्साइड नॉट बेरियम पर ऑक्साइड राइट ऑल ऑफ दीज आर आयनिक बॉन्डिंग they have a crystal lattice structure they have strong electrostatic forces high melting and boiling point in the past paper they ask you a certain question that is let's say tumhe compound de denge they'll give you the compound they will ask you what type of bonding does it have you're going to simply state that it is ionic bonding then they ask you what type of arrangement will it have please understand that ionic bonds are regularly arranged so you're going to mention that so down the group charge density will decrease this weakens the ionic bond and electrostatic attraction which is why solubility will increase from magnesium oxide to barium oxide please understand one thing please understand one thing that for group 2 there's a thing called lattice energy or lattice enthalpy this by the way uh, all of these are ionic compounds right lattice energy means lattice energy will only be seen with an ionic compound lattice energy tells you how strong an ionic bond is so a higher value of lattice energy would simply mean that the ions have strongly held on to each other main simply itni si baat keh raha hu ke lattice jo hai wo ek ionic compound banata hai an ionic compound an ionic compound makes a lattice and thereby releases an energy called the lattice energy if the value of lattice energy is high that means the ionic bond is extremely strong which further means which further means that the ions are holding on to each other strongly or tightly you could say does that make sense now let's say i am putting my ionic compound into water now you know from o levels that all ionic compounds are water soluble definitely right but there are a few exceptions like mgo the fact that the fact that mgo holds on to its compound magnesium holds on to the oxide ion extremely strong the bond that both of these have is an extremely strong bond so when you are placing it in water water molecules will try to approach let's say i have magnesium i have oxygen if i have placed it in water right water will try to approach it but magnesium has so strongly held on to the oxide ion that it will not prefer bonding with the water molecule and since it does not bond with water molecule this is why it is insoluble so moving forward down the group charge density decreases this weakens the ionic bond and electrostatic attraction which is why solubility increases because down the group the bond is not as strong as the ones forming above right for example magnesium oxide when put into water will not dissolve in water it would not prefer bonding with water whereas barium oxide would readily bond thereby forming a strong alkaline solution ph values are approximate values so you can just uh have an estimated value in your mind doesn't really matter you could even write 13 you could even write 11 doesn't matter however try to stay in the range 
basic oxides are the ones that can react with acid and acidic oxides to form salt and water magnesium oxide when reacts with hcl gives you salt plus water calcium oxide reacts with p4o10 which is an acidic oxide gives you a white precipitate barium oxide and sulfuric acid will give you a salt plus water again beryllium oxide kind of behaves differently because of its small ionic radius which means there is a high charge density right high charge density hence it shows amphoteric character amphoteric substances are ones which react with acids and bases both if you bring an acid close to it if you bring an acid close to an amphoteric oxide it will behave as a base if you bring in a base close to it it will behave as an acid vice versa so see beryllium oxide when has an acid it will act as a base to form salt and water if it was brought close to a to an alkali it reacted as an acid to form a salt plus water please 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 keep all of these equations in your head because they can ask you all of this moving forward reactions of group 2 elements with cold water for magnesium magnesium with h2o right forms magnesium hydroxide by the way dissolving is different reaction is different dissolving is a physical phenomenon reaction is a chemical phenomenon okay moving forward magnesium with water will form an alkaline solution plus hydrogen gas the rate of reaction is slow which means bubbles of gas are given slowly there's a white precipitate of magnesium hydroxide seen right let's say initially it was water in liquid form let's say i'm providing steam so now the temperature has increased which makes the reaction faster bubbles of gas are given up quickly and the white solid appears right with cold water again calcium will have calcium hydroxide strontium will have strontium hydroxide barium will have barium hydroxide all of these reaction will occur vigorously the rate of reaction is comparatively faster bubbles of gas are given off slowly there's a lower energy of activation we cannot use beryllium as it has a thick protective layer of oxide so it can't react with water all of these hydroxides have ionic bonding they have a lattice structure right arrangement is regular exhibits electrostatic attraction all ionic compounds will have electrostatic force of attraction and as the charge density decreases weaker electrostatic there's a weaker electrostatic attraction and therefore solubility will increase as you move down see magnesium hydroxide is insoluble whereas barium hydroxide is soluble right let's say you're mixing these two solutions there's a precipitate and there's a filtrate the precipitate is because of the magnesium hydroxide filtrate is because of the barium hydroxide this is how they ask you sometimes in the past paper reactions of group 2 elements with acids with acid it will form a salt plus hydrogen gas bubble of gas is given off where m can be any metal in this range magnesium calcium strontium barium these are general equations i would recommend you learn the general part and you could simply place off the metal there and then with hno3 this becomes your compound and this hydrogen gas bubbles of gas are given off thermal stability of group 2 carbonates and nitrates right uh they will undergo decomposition to form an oxide and carbon dioxide nitrate will undergo 
decomposition to form oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen you will have to learn all of these please understand that thermal stability of group 2 carbonates and nitrates will depend on the charge density and polarization polarization is basically the distortion of the electronic cloud greater the charge density greater it can polarize the electron cloud let's say for example magnesium has a small ionic radius and charge of 2 plus whereas barium has the same charge however a greater radius if you are bringing a negative charge close to it let's say cl it can actually this one can pull its electron cloud comparatively to a greater extent towards itself thereby showing polarization or distortion this one polarizes the electron cloud more because of its high charge density as compared to barium okay moving forward thermal stability of group 2 carbonates and nitrates will depend on the charge density and polarization so the greater the charge density and polarization the easier decomposition which means less temperature is needed for thermal decomposition right so moving from magnesium to barium your ionic radius is increasing thereby decreasing the charge density and therefore polarization decreases so electron pulling effect of the cation becomes weaker so the temperature is needed for decomposition hence thermal stability down the group will increase a drawn a diagram this is the polarization effect solubility of sulfates and carbonates they ask you this entire question as it is the solubility of group 2 sulfates and carbonates decreases down the group this is because hydration enthalpy becomes less exothermic down the group now uses of group 2 elements and their compounds calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide and calcium carbonate are used to neutralize the acidity of the soil calcium sulfate is used as a plaster of paris magnesium sulfate is used for surfacing of paper and calcium oxide is used for making of clay one more thing there's a solution that we have uh, there's a formula that we have like we teachers use it right so basically enthalpy change of solution if it is exothermic overall the compound is soluble if it is endo it is insoluble right lattice enthalpy is basically when the energy release when an ionic bond is formed right and therefore should have been an exothermic value which is negative i am multiplying it by another negative value if you see there's a minus le value which makes this overall which makes this overall part a positive value right moving forward hydration enthalpy hydration is basically the making of bonds with water molecules and therefore it is exothermic which means it has a negative value right now if i am dropping a group 2 sulfate or a carbonate into water it will work off it will work off 
it will work off. And if I'm dropping a group two sulfate or a carbonate into water, right? It's either gonna break its bonds and make bonds with water molecules, right? Yeah. Or it could have not broken its bonds and tended to stay within itself, right? Thereby not dissolving in water. So the point being, the point being, let's say if a if an ionic compound has a large value of lattice enthalpy, right? Which means it has strong bonds amongst itself and will not break it and will not try to break it and thereby will not bond with water molecules. 